In 1889, the discovery was made of an inscribed rock on an island close to Elephantine, north of Aswan, eventually being partially deciphered in 1953 and appropriately named the Famine Stela for the context of the text contained in the hieroglyphic inscriptions relating to a seven-year drought. These inscriptions contain many things that had been lost to time and if it wasn't for the revelation of the stela, we would be missing a huge gap in the history of the dynastic Egyptians. And indeed, this is a history that is lost and one in which we do not understand. Within the context of these inscriptions exists the name of the Pharaoh Djoser, his architect Imhotep, and the god of the Egyptians Shum, who is associated with the very first humans to walk the earth. The very mention of this god provokes thoughts of the pre-dynastic episode of the region, of which the dynasty of pharaohs in Egypt tried to re-establish the glory of the before time after the great cataclysmic occurrences as foretold in the biblical narrative that had separated civilization by thousands of years. The strange thing about this famine stela is the fact that it mentions man-made stone, could they really be referring to a type of pouring stone like concrete? In columns 6 to 18, M. Hotep is describing to the pharaoh the site of Elephantine Island and what minerals and stones are available there. And then Djoser describes how he had a dream when the god Shnum is telling how to build the pyramids and temples of the gods using man-made stone. Imhotep's account of the stela is incredibly interesting. He visited the area of Elephantine on a state visit where he visited the temple of the god and saw the granite, precious stones, minerals, and building stones. He mentioned in the scribe stela that the work of these rocks on both banks of the river in view of the town of Elephantine, there is a stone in its middle in whose interior evil is contained. It's called the Rock of Elephantine. Learn the names of the stony materials which are to be found lying in the midst of the rocky mountain, which are in the east and in the west, which are on the island of the river. Elephantine, which are in the desert, which are inland of the east and west banks, which are in the midst of the river. He then names a whole list of materials before he continues saying, Learn the names of these precious stones located upstream and are found at a distance of four miles. Gold, silver, copper, iron, lapis lazuli, turquoise, jasper, and radish stone. These are the kinds of stone from the interior of the land. The next section of the deciphered text, Name Djoser Decree, mentions the encounter Pharaoh had in a dream with the god. And although this section is referring to the seven years famine in Egypt at this time, there is a stunning reference that has the world of understanding at a standstill. And it reads, When I was asleep, my heart was in life and happiness. I found the god standing. I caused him pleasure by worshiping and adoring him. He made himself known to me and said, I am Shnum, your creator. My arms are around you to steady your body and to safeguard your limbs. I bestow on you ores with precious stones that were not worked before to build temples, rebuild ruins, and sculpt chapels for his master. I am master of creation. I have created myself, the great ocean which came into being in past times, according to whose pleasure the Nile rises. It then goes on as a god's promise to flood the Nile area so that crops can be grown before finishing with the almighty statement that the land of Egypt is beginning to stir again. The shores are shining wonderfully and wealth and well-being dwell within them as it had been before. So it states that the god bestows the pharaoh with knowledge of how to rebuild the temples with orus and precious stones that have not been worked before and that he could use this knowledge to build temples and other structures that were fit for the gods. Shnum's instructions and Imenhotep's revelation do not mention any constructional stone such as limestone or sandstone or granite blocks. 
These materials are not found in the list. In Djoser's dream, which is the 19th column by the way, the god Shnum is giving minerals and, since former times, nobody ever worked with them to build the temples of the gods. To build monuments, Djoser was given a list of minerals and ores whose hieroglyphic names have not been translated so far. This is seriously suggesting that stone is made from minerals and ores and not quarried and transported. The stone would be made on site and poured into a cast for perfect alignment and this of course does answer a lot of questions. If it can be proven without a shadow of a doubt however, most of the inscriptions remain untranslated Despite many efforts to decipher the stela in the 20th century, there simply does not exist the context to translate many of these hieroglyphics at the moment. But more study is needed and this ancient diary could yet give us many answers as to the building techniques that the dynastic Egyptians were trying to understand from much more ancient sources. This is why Pharaoh consorts with the god. This is an open reflection by Djoser of the ancient past in the time of the dynastic era. An open understanding that the past had already occurred and the knowledge of the past had been forgotten in terms of building methods and therefore Djoser shows that he is working with very ancient knowledge of which the dynastic Egyptians were trying to re-understand during this era and this is immortalized later on in this stela. There is a mountain massive in its eastern region of Elephantine containing all the ores, all the crushed weathered stones, aggregates suitable for agglomeration, all the products sought for building the temples of the gods of the north and south, the stalls for sacred animals, the pyramid for the king, all statues that stand in temples and in sanctuaries. There is in the midst of the river a place of relaxation for every man who processes the ores on its two sides. Learn the names of the stony materials which are to be found. Learn the names of the rare ores located upstream. I found the god standing. He spoke to me. I am Shnum, your creator. My arms are around you to steady your body, to safeguard your limbs. I bestow on you rare ores upon rare ores. Since creation, nobody ever processed them to make stone for building the temples of the gods or rebuilding the ruined temples. Anyway, we just wanted to touch on the context of the famine stela and to bring these words to your attention to better understand what it may be referencing. The step pyramid of this pharaoh, for example, is said to be the oldest pyramid built a hundred years or so before the Great Pyramid, but this is the timeline that Egyptologists would have us believe and the very fact that the mentioned god Shnum was regarded as the guardian of the source of the Nile River. His significance led to early Theodoric names of him for children such as Shnum Kufwe, Shnum is my protector and this just happens to be the full name of Khufu, the apparent builder of the Great Pyramid of Giza. Isn't that astonishing? What do you guys think about this anyway? Comments below and as always, thank you for watching.